Good morning, everybody. I hope you are recovering from all the Christmas food that you ate, all the presents you had, all the candy, everything in your stockings. Welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your vehicle every Saturday from 11 to noon right here on 92.3 KTAR. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. If you've got questions, we've got answers, so we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also get a hold of us via text at 411-923, 411-923. Questions, comments, feedback. If you guys want to hear a topic on this show that we're not covering and you're like, when are they going to cover this, please let us know. You can also contact us at BumperToBumperRadio.com on the contact link. So today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, fact or fiction about overeating, I think, open phones, top mistakes auto repair consumers make. You're throwing that to me, Dave? <laughs> yes, I am throwing that to you. I was just going to ignore you for a little while and see what you did. There's a lot of them. Well, we were talking about this before the show, obviously, getting ready, and we it really goes I mean we first we had the top five and then it was ten and all of a sudden there's fifteen things on the list and it and it starts to expand and these are the I guess the common things that we see in our shops every day uh, characteristics or things that people do whatever their reason for doing them sometimes we don't know uh, maybe they're conscious decisions and and unconscious decisions sometimes we do things because that's just the way we were shown to do it that's the way my parents always did I just do it that way. Or you just don't know any better, so we just do something because you've got to do something. Well, on the top, I know when when we made our list, though, the uh, top thing that came up, the first thing that I wrote down was shop hopping, being Mm. a, being a, a mistake that people make. You're what I call an orphan auto repair customer, and it's more expensive to be a shop hopper than someone who has a a relationship that is long you know, it's the same people every year. You got to find a mechanic you know and trust and get a relationship with them and just go see him. But when you get a la carte repairs at a bunch of different shops, you end up either getting too many repairs because sometimes the same repair gets done twice because this guy happened to call it a this service. This guy called it this service, but they're really the same thing. And right. So you're getting the same thing done twice, but, but neither will, it's not a holistic approach to your car. So you can spend money, extra money that you need to spend. Or, you know, this guy sells you the things he likes to sell. This guy sells you the things he likes to sell. You know, so everyone kind of maybe cherry picks the work they want off your car, but they they leave out the things they don't want to talk to you about, the things that are hard to sell or not very sexy for them to sell. Well, so or, get them. or the difficult work, maybe. Uh, I wasn't thinking this until you started talking about someone's, you know, they sell what they like to do or what they're capable of doing. Mm, if you're not going to a shop that runs the gamut of being able to do everything on your car, and when I say everything, I mean not everybody does windows and glass and body work and mechanical work, but at my shop, we're a one-stop shop. If we can't do it, we'll get you to the right person that will. But that, I got a great that, example, then. That's the transmission. Some people don't like dealing with transmissions. So they just ignore that part of your car. Just don't even touch it. Don't talk about it. But we'll certainly take care of your bad alternator, your leaking CV boot, or what your differential needing service. But that's they'll sell the sexy items, but they're not sexy if they don't know how to do anything <laughs> with them. I, I don't know that there's much that's sexy about auto repair. Oh yes, but... there is. When you're in auto repair, everything's sexy. <laughs> okay. I like new... how you roll your eyes when you, <laughs> when you say that. But um, okay, so. Shop hopping. So we want to find a home. We want to stay there. The good, the bad. Just let that one person take care of the car and, and develop that relationship. And, and when you have the relationship, he can also tell you when there's something you should be worried about and something he doesn't necessarily want to handle. He'd say, you know, you do need some transmission work. You want to go over to Tri-City Transmission, for instance. This is what they do, but come back to me for everything else. You know, he may send you out for certain things, but you, you go see your dentist. You need a root canal. He doesn't do that root canal. He sends you out to the guy he knows. But have the relationship. They're managing that all that experience as well, so they're thinking about it so you don't have to. Well, one of the things I find interesting at your shop is when you got a car in, you guys are checking to see if there's any recalls on the car. 
So you guys see, oh, there's an open recall on this car. You guys will actually take it to the dealership so your we, customer doesn't have to deal with that. We, that's, we don't do warranty work, for, you know, that recall work, but we will handle it for you. We'll be the administrator. Because they got a different list of sexy items they want to sell your customers, so you just <laughs> save them from all that hassle. So, okay, so what's your number two? Your number two, Dave, I guess, is uh, which, which one on the list? I mean, they're... You know, I, I'm just such a not a phone call pricing kind of guy. Phone pricing, sometimes phone pricing does work out. I have seen it work out. So peop, so when you call, so the, I guess there's a couple occasions. I, the most popular one that I hear is, well, I don't know that it is the most popular. I guess there's there's three popular ones. And you can tell these people are already in a shop and they're calling around to get a price, more for a confirmation, just to mm-hmm. to get the, the uh, reassurance that what they're being told is accurate. I guess the second one is the people that have a price and they're calling around because they want to. They're shopping for a better price, or you have the. I don't have any idea what's wrong with my car. There's a coolant leak, and uh, my dad's car needed a water pump once, and I called him, and he <laughs> said, "So I'm just calling to get a price on a water pump." And the problems in the. I guess the the latter is, is the worst case. You have a problem. You think you have a transmission problem. You think you have this, and you go in and you're telling them what you want a price on, not asking them to give you a price for what's wrong with the car. I got a classic example. This happened. This is literally two weeks ago. Guy calls me up. Hey, my daughter's got a 2001 Honda Civic, and I need a new transmission for it. How much? Oh, one Honda Civic. They don't never need transmissions. They're a four cylinder, 1.7 liter transmission. Never wears out. No, really. You got so what's going on? Okay, I think it needs a torque converter. How much for a torque converter? I'm not going to give you a price on a torque converter because you don't know what it needs because they never use torque converters. Just not something you need. He goes, my other guy, he's a Honda guy. He said it needs a torque converter. How much for a torque converter? And I, I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I recognize this guy's voice. Is this one of those deals like, like when someone's giving you a crank call, you just keep yeah, talking to him until you know who they are? Okay. Finally, I go, Todd, is that you? Silence. He goes, how do you, how do you know this is Todd? <laughs> because you, you just... were my customer 10 years ago. Uh, when when I was selling industrial cooling equipment, and he goes, yeah, I go, yeah, Dave from United Metal Products. He goes, oh yeah, man, it's been a long time. So bring that stinking car down here. Let's go take it for a drive because you don't need a torque converter. So he brings it down. We take it for a drive, and I said, you know, it feels like it would be a torque converter, but I am certain this is not a torque converter. So why don't you leave it with me? I'll get it figured out. Well, guess what it was? It was an idle air control motor, three hundred dollars. You know, I would venture to say a torque converter could have been twelve hundred dollars, maybe fifteen hundred dollars. Well, in- transmission could have been twenty five hundred dollars. So not only was he, and if I would have just given him a price, he would have just come in and bought a torque converter. He would have had that new torque converter and would have done the same thing. No, Dave, I would say it gets it it actually gets worse, which kind of parlays us into another one of our uh, you know mistakes. Mistakes is is he. Let's just say he doesn't get lucky enough to call you. And so he's just on this quest mm. to find the lowest price because that's all he knows. Right. Okay. So, you know, Acme Transmission, it's this much. And first it started off maybe at 1500 And now he got the deal, man. I called 47 places today <laughs> and spent two hours doing it. And I got one for $900. I'm going to save myself whatever the math was. I don't know. 400 bucks. Right. So we're, now he ends up. Hey man, this was the best price. I need that torque. I called you. Remember me? Oh, you bet. Yeah, torque converter, no problem. Get it done for you. It's done. Um, but it's still doing the same thing. Well, you wanted the torque converter, <laughs> or they get the whole thing. Ah, you don't need torque converter. You need transmission. But mm-hmm. today and today only, and then they go quietly fix the three hundred dollar. Yep, take care of the Mistake. idle air control motor. Say, oh, you know, we should probably take care of that idle air control motor. The <laughs> torque converter was nine. This thing's going to be five. Yeah, piece <laughs> of cake. But the other reason I think that he thought he needed a transmission, there are some Hondas that need transmission. Lots this, of them. And this goes into Dave's uh, coin the phrase Google Gnostics, or I say diagnosis by Google. So he has this problem. He goes starts Googling. Mm-hmm. All Hondas need transmissions. All Hondas, all Toyotas, all Chevrolets. Just Google what? any of them. All you're going to find is problems. Oh, that sounds like what I got. And this is the thing about Google Gnostics or WebMD is that, you know, I could call the doctor and say my chest hurts. How much for a new heart? I don't know. Maybe you got indigestion, <laughs> you know? Well, I read here on WebMD that the, the pain goes shooting down your arm, you know, or this or that or the other. You know, you can read stuff that may seem like it relates. In this case, this his symptoms did relate to a torque converter, 
situation on a V6 Honda. Well, yeah, that was, that was Honda. my point. There's a lot of Odysseys. They, yeah, a lot of the Odysseys need yeah. a lot of the early Acura legends. They had problems, but pretty soon you start Googling this stuff and you're getting all this information. All that information. Co- it's good. It might have been good information in 2001 on this certain model, but it starts expanding out to all the models and all the – and so you end up where you don't need to be. Well, when we come back, we've got Melanie and a lot of open lines at 602-277-5827. You can also text us at 411-923. We want to talk about anything you want to talk about in relation to your car. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, and this guy doing the chicken dance (laughs) across the studio for me is Dave Riccio. And we are Bumper to Bumper Radio every single Saturday at 11 helping you with your car and we've got uh, a couple of phone calls melanie and karen waiting and we were talking in the first segment about the top what do we got dave the top mistakes consumers make when getting their car serviced or fixed or or dealing with their car and we we worked our way for, through the first well in no particular order what shop hopping which is just jumping around and willy-nilly here or there google gnostics or webmd i would call it webmd for your car and phone price shopping and why some of these things can create hassles in your life and we'll work our way through the rest of this is it hassles this. extra money anxiety i mean what is a mistake it, well I it's, think all, it's all those it's well yeah it's all in this case it's all of them that can you, that you can unnecessarily create for yourself. This auto repair deal can be very easy for you as a consumer. We'll make it easy. Right. Well, it's the unrealistic expectations, but we better get to the phones. Yes. <laughs> so Melanie from Phoenix has a 2000 Ford Explorer XLT. Melanie, what can we help you with? Hello. Good morning. Good Thanks morning. for taking my call. I've got two questions. And uh, please forgive me if I don't use the right uh, word for the item. Whatever you um, say is right. When, <laughs> when, you, when I'm putting my car in gear, at the end of that handle, there's a button, and I think it has to do with the overdrive. Yeah, okay. Uh, it okay, does. so when I'm going down the road... 65, 70 miles an hour, sometimes it comes on automatically, and I can't get it off. It, should I be concerned about that? Yes. What that button does, that's the overdrive cancel button. So you're, that's probably a five-speed automatic transmission in your 2000 Ford Explorer, and fifth gear is overdrive. So if you just, let's say you're towing something and you don't want to be in fifth gear, well, you just click that button. And instead of being in fifth gear on the highway, you're in fourth gear on the highway. And, and, but, Dave, that'll turn on the little light on the dash that says OD off. Yeah, overdrive off. Now, when your engine has a problem, the little, little yellow light that looks like an engine comes on, the check engine light. When your transmission has a problem on a Ford, the overdrive light comes on. So it's oh, like boy. the check engine light for the transmission uh, but this one, you know, but it's not for the engine. So it's the it's the problem with your transmission. And if you're seeing it on the freeway and everything feels pretty normal when you're driving it, Ford Explorers, you know, that light coming on the freeway, the transmission could be running too hot. Sometimes is the problem, and sometimes it's reminiscent of a torque converter clutch slipping coat when you're getting it out on the freeway uh, after a long drive. Uh, but oftentimes when you go and you turn the car off. Get back in the car next time you drive it. That light is no longer on. So, Correct. So it is the cancel light, uh, but it is also the check engine light for the transmission. But now, well, she has another question, but I want to ask you a question, Dave. Can that light, that button can get worn out in the, the I've seen some of those with the shifter that's all sloppy, and you can also maybe get a short that's just like someone sitting there playing with that switch, too. Is that less yeah, common? Yeah, those or? buttons do go bad, and then the, the wire does go bad. That's you know, inside that handle is a long wire, and it crimps right where it you know goes into the steering column because it's moving up and down and up and down and up and down. 2000, that thing's been moving for 13 years. You know, now now it starts to get a break in it. So that's the, I, I don't believe that's what she's describing, but that is a common problem where people have a button or a light does not come on. So what's your second question? Uh, second question, well, just about the first question, I do notice that happens a lot more in the summertime when I am going up and down the muggy on rim yep. and coming back down into the desert. So I wonder if it does have something to do with the transmission of heating. 
Okay, so second question, when I'm going about 72 to 74 miles an hour, all of a sudden I start getting, I've started to get a vibration or shake in the front end. Is that tires or is that something else, do you think? Well, the first thing I would start with when it, with any vibration would be tires. Uh, okay. You always want to make sure the tires are rotated or at least balanced. So if that came into my shop, we would want to go drive it and verify and, and duplicate the concern. If you think it's from the front, we would, of course, balance all four tires, then go drive the car again, see if we're able to make any change. And if the tires didn't change it, then we're going to start looking at things like the drive shaft, hmm. U-joint, uh, if it's four-wheel drive, potentially something in the the front drive shaft or, or axle shafts. But Her question was really good, and her information was good. <laughs> and that was on our list was, you know, people don't ask questions when they go in for auto repair. They just... You know, it's uncomfortable to ask questions. They don't really know what they're talking about, so they're afraid to say something wrong. You absolutely have full permission to say something wrong. If you want to come in and say, I think I got a gonculator pump problem, no such thing, but that's fine with us. Well, let's talk about your gonculator pump problem. <laughs> when does it happen? Well, it happens at 72 to 74 miles an hour. Typically with tire vibrations, it's going to be, you know, at high speed. It's going to be kind of a small window. It's there at 72 and 74, but at 76, totally gone. I mean, is that what you find? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can drive through them typically, but we usually have them, see them in the in the in the lower range, in the the forty five mile an hour range. Hmm. But yeah, so we're going to start with tires and a test drive. You know, uh, balancing the tires, a good test drive. And Melanie, you're in Phoenix. Bumper to bumper radio dot com. There's going to be a list of shops there. Dave's Tri City Transmission. He's in Tempe. If you wanted to have a transmission specialist look at the transmission. But I, I think that's something that needs to be done, especially since you say it's worse when it's when it's hot outside. Yeah, and I that's, think I think you're working the torque converter clutch harder, and, and when the torque converter doesn't fully engage the clutch, and it's slipping, and it's not a slip that you're going to perceive. It could be a slip of a hundred RPM, you know, and uh, that's going to create additional heat in the transmission. And then sometimes, uh, if you get a there's a transmission temperature sensor inside of there. And uh, it can be reading wrong, you know, it can be reading too high. So maybe the transmission is not even overheating, but maybe you just got a bad transmission temperature very, sensor. It very well could be nothing. And, and, and we were talking about the top mistakes. Dave, you said um, you started to go into them about having good information. And so two of these kind of go back together. We're back to our, our list of mistakes. And, and one of them was not asking questions, and the other one was holding back information at the write-up counter. So you as the consumer come in, and Melanie was great. She knew exactly when it does it, had great descriptions, even though she thought she wasn't saying it right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because we know what you're talking about. That was absolutely perfect. But what we're talking about here is maybe you've had your car into another place to try to get this problem solved or and they've done it, or they've given you maybe an answer that you didn't like, we typically need to know that. The more information that you can provide to us as the service advisor when we're helping you, it's, gonna, it's going to make the job go much easier, likely less expensive. I was literally just on the phone the other day, and I was talking to this lady about her transmission issue, and she's like, I don't know if this has anything to do with anything, but I thought I would tell you anyway. You know, I just had this repair done in another shop. And I'm like, oh. That's exactly the information I needed. Had you not told me that, it would have taken me twice as long to figure things out. You know, we'd have more phone calls, more issues. So you know what? You're more than welcome to spew information when you're taking your car and this happened and that happened. Just tell them slow enough so you don't overwhelm them and they can write it down so it doesn't get lost. So when we come back, we've got open lines at 602-277-5827. If you're out at the parade, you can also text us at 411-923. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio. He is Matt Allen, and we are trying to help you with your car. We want to remove additional expense out of your car repair, unnecessary expense, and anxiety from car repair. People hate car repair. It's like me hating to call my dentist, me hating to call... Uh, my accountant, it's like tax time. We gotta go talk about. I hate it, Speaking and I don't want to ask dumb questions when I go down there. Like, what the heck does it mean? I just write it off for next year. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I have a professional accountant that takes care of that stuff for me. So we do have Karen up next, and open lines at six zero two two seven seven five eight two seven. 
Get out of your coma, your food coma from uh, Christmas. Pick up the phone, give us a call, uh, or shoot us a text. So we're going to go ahead with Karen, and we got a couple of texts to answer. Go ahead, Karen. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Um, thank you for taking my call. Uh, my car was running fine, and I took it in for a routine oil change. And about two days later, it started stalling on me. Like, it, it stalled on the freeway while I was going 65 miles an hour. Um, it stalls when I idle. If I'm going through, like, a drive through and I'm, I, you know, McDonald's drive through and I'm idling there. And sometimes while I'm driving, it'll buck like it's, you know, it bucks like it's catching back in. And also the oil light is coming on on and off during the day, which was not happening before the routine oil change. And most times it won't restart until several attempts. Like it's not getting the gas, it feels like. Right. Sometimes it'll start right back up. Okay, Karen, so none of these, it, it seems like all of this stuff happened uh, shortly right after your oil service, correct? Your maintenance? Two days after it, okay. yes. Have you noticed? <laughs> nothing, have you sorry, noticed? Nothing it, was Okay, have, have you noticed anything dripping in the driveway or or uh, fluids underneath the car or anything like that? You know, I haven't I haven't noticed it, but I haven't really looked. I kind of back out and just go. Um, let me take a look and see it's okay. right here. Well, what we're going to want to do, Karen, is take a look underneath yep. the car where you normally park, and you want to see if there's anything in there. And this goes for anybody. You had your car into a shop, and you had maybe something, a simple oil change, or maybe you had a repair. And then a day or two later, you start to have something else happening. You need to look for evidence. This is part of giving the shop good information, whether it's when you have to bring the car back, unfortunately, to us to fix something that we have, maybe have to have a second shot at or if you're taking in for the first time. So we want you to look under the car. Do you see anything on the ground? Do you smell anything? Is there any anything out of the ordinary happening? And especially since this happened right after, I'm not gonna say that this is something caused by the repair shop. Could be it totally coincidental. Could be 100% coincidental. I mean, we've had cars come in and they don't start when they go to leave. They've got a dead battery or, or something happens. I mean, totally unrelated. So once you've gathered some of that information, then you need to very nicely go back to the shop and just say, hey, we're, we're having this problem. Here's what I've noticed, and it happened after. It's important to do that because if you let it go for too long, maybe there is a situation that they've created, but you've waited two weeks, or, and now you've run the thing completely out of oil, or you've, you've allowed a problem that may have been minor and easily corrected to turn into this big problem. Mm. So got to go back to the shop, got to be nice. And just ask them to take a look at it. And don't just assume it's related. Yeah, it may or it may not be. And then if they tell you something and you need this, or maybe they'll say, sorry, oh, sorry we messed it up. We we, mm -hmm. we took care of it. Sorry about that. Here's a coupon for the next service. Who knows? Whatever they do. Or they may come back and say, well, that's odd, but here's what happened. If you don't like the answer you get, maybe a second opinion, but work with that shop. Keep that relationship going. They're important. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. Thanks so much for the call, Karen. And I'm going to go to a text, and I think this is one, Matt, you were mentioned, might be good for Google Gnostics because that's what I did in the break. I looked at the text. The guy's got a 2001 Ford Crown Victoria. He turns the windshield wipers off, and they park right at the top, straight up and down. That would be annoying, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, you got a multi-function switch that operates those wiper blades in uh, he mentioned the transmission in the wiper motor not the transmission for your car you know some things he's already probably done some research about it but you're going to find what's common and when i went to what we call identifix which is a, a subscription that we have as auto shops that we can look for confirmed fixes where someone said hey i had this problem this is what it was and if you see 20 of the same answers for the same problem is a very high likelihood, and I didn't see anything in there specifically for his problem. Well, and the difference, that's a professional website. That's for industry people. I guess mm. that's like the journal of so-and-so for the pediatricians or, or uh, medical books. And, and we're going to go in and we can see everything with that exact same model and make, and these are answers by professionals for professionals to, to, to help, and, and that's one of the things that we can do sometimes to shortcut a diagnostic procedure. Well, or yeah, certain, to... you know, and, and really auto shops charge by the minute. I mean, if 
I mean, they charge by the hour or diagnostic time. So you, you want them to use some tools. I mean, why go reinvent the book if I can see 50 other people had this same problem and this is what it is? Well, I'm not just going to replace it. I'm going to go test that particular component that they think caused the problem. So when you do know exactly what the problem is, or, or, or I guess we don't know what the problem is exactly with those wipers, but a small subset or a small section of components, you're not talking about some, you know, the car's not running right, or I think I might have a transmission problem. My wipers don't work. That's pretty narrow. Mm. And, and again, or you have a window regulator problem, and you want to try and tackle it at home, that's a time where a YouTube video or Google may right. be just fine. You may get enough to help you where you won't get in trouble. Well, we got another text, and then we'll get back to some phone calls during the break. A uh, guy is looking for a good shop in Ahwatukee. And uh, if you go to bumper to bumper com, Awatuki is kind of one of those places where there's not a bunch of independent repair shops, but just over the other side of the I 10 is Automotive Diagnostic Service, ADS, and a uh, fantastic shop. There's not much they can't do over there. Every time I go to that guy's shop, I have tool envy because there is nothing he doesn't buy that's going to make him a better auto repair shop. I mean, he really goes all out. Uh, he's got fantastic technicians that have been with him for a long time. So if you're in the Ahwatukee area and you're looking for a shop that you want to get a relationship started with so you don't have to shop hop anymore, Automotive Diagnostics. We are going to go with Tony in Gilbert on a 1994 Pontiac Trans Am. Go ahead, Tony. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yes, how you doing? Let's see. I have a uh, 94 Trans Am. I've had it since it was new. It has under 100,000 miles on it. And all of a sudden, the car won't turn over. It has plenty of power. There's nothing wrong with the battery, but it will not turn over to start. Now, hold on a second. When you say it won't turn over to start, you also said it has plenty of, I think, juice or the battery was good. This is where we get terms mixed up sometimes. It won't turn over to start. So when you turn the key, does it do nothing, or is it like it's out of gas? It's cranking and cranking and cranking. It's just not starting. No, it's not. It's not cranking. Um, all the dash lights come on. Every single you know engine, engine light, whatever light, they all come on. But it, and it has power, but it's not cranking at all. Okay, so it's not turning over. I'd, um, be, I'd be banging on the starter. Well, yeah, that's 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 the 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 quick uh, parking test. lot type test. Yeah. So what what Dave's talking about, Tony, is you want to jack the car up always when you lift the car. Make sure you've got a jack stand or or something under the car to keep it from falling on you if there's a problem. And you're going to have somebody hold the key in the start position, and you're just going to take a small hammer and just give the starter a cup of wax if that's something that. You know, you feel comfortable doing getting under the car. If it starts when they're holding the key and you whack it with the starter, mm, there's a problem. Starter. I mean, that's a tow truck. I guess it's a tow truck trick. That's when I think I learned it years ago <laughs> driving in a tow truck. You, just, you know, when, when they send you out there roadside service, whether you get the car started or tow it 10 miles, it usually paid the same. So When a GM, you're banging on the starter, and a Ford, you're banging on the solenoid on the fender, you know, depending on the year of the car right. and, and, and what the setup was. But uh, yeah, it's a good way to to check it out. I mean, you're in Gilbert. If you don't have a shop and you don't feel like jacking up a car and getting underneath it, as most people don't, you know, we've got great shops in Gilbert. Uh, I'm thinking of Desert Car Care, and you can find them at bumper to bumper You can also email us questions on the contact link. So we sure appreciate the phone call, 602-277-5827. Looks like we're going to go with Tyler in Phoenix on a 2006 Dodge Charger. Go ahead, Tyler. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. I have a, uh, a Dodge Charger that's showing a check engine light. When I check the code, it's not throwing the code. I clear the light, and about two days later, I get the same thing. Another check engine light comes on with no code. Hmm. Okay. Well, how are you checking the code or attempting to check the code? I've got a CAN2 OB2, uh, OBD2 uh, checker. Okay. Well, my first thought, Dave, is that we don't have a scan tool that's got that is uh, is good enough. Basically, it's not able to read all the modules in this car to get the information out. That's the first thing I'm thinking. It's, it's a scan tool issue. And for everybody listening, you know, I see these advertisements and infomercials on TV. They show this little checker, and I think your iPhone can even check the codes in your car anymore. Um, but you plug into the connector, the ALDL. Is that what it's called? Uh, I, I don't Short know, for Assembly Line Diagnostic Link. 
Right, so you're going to plug into that, and they're looking for any time that, re- that yellow check engine light comes on means that the computer has marked an event or an error or something is not right. That could be an error with the transmission, you know, which would be in the transmission control module. That could be an error with the engine, which would be in the engine module. That could be an ABS error or speed sensor error that could be in different modules. And some of these code checkers, they just give you a basic, they're going to check the basic main brain, but they won't look, look any deeper. So you can clear the code, and the checker may do that, but it didn't really tell you the information you wanted to know. So there is a huge difference. I've never seen a check engine light where there wasn't a code behind it. Have you? No, there's there, there's got to be something there. It's just it's a, it's a tool issue, for sure. It's time for fact or fiction. I hate, I hate that thing. Dave. <laughs> I love to play it. You hate it. it. <laughs> so uh, you know, Matt and I had a little argument about this one before the show, and and we seem like we get along. We really don't. <laughs> I, I can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do get along. I, I don't want to lie. But uh, the fact or fiction, overfilling at the pump or topping off, as they call it, is bad for your car. Fact or fiction? You botch these things every time. <laughs> I do. Because <laughs> I don't know how to put them in like this like third person, first person. It doesn't, I just, you know, it doesn't I just say don't, don't uh, overfill. You, how are you supposed to know when it's overfilled? That's stupid. The handle turns off. Okay. It's topping off. So it, it, I've forgotten now we've got this thing, so I'll screw it up. <laughs> but, but that is uh, a, a fact, Dave. It's a fact. It's a fact. You don't want it. There's no need to be topping off at the, at the gas station. So you, you put the thing in, go full blast, boom, it shuts off. You're just done. Just, just be done. I used We're to always top. top it off. I mean, that way I've got to push my car only 900 yards instead of 1,000 when it breaks down or or, or whatever the case is. But they say it's for emissions, and that's all fine and dandy. We don't want to have pollution and, and have the hydrocarbons escaping. But the reason that I'm saying not to do it because there are components in the fuel system on the vapor side that can be damaged. You know, when I was a kid, I thought if you went ahead and shut the pump off and then left the handle open and just kind of hit the hose, you could actually get an extra quarter tank or a quarter of a gallon, something like that. Does that does that work? Fact or fiction? Uh, I think you get a little bit, maybe enough to start a fire. <laughs> <laughs> but, a couple drips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not not much at all. So, so 602-277-5827. It is bad for your car. It's kind of like overeating. I definitely overate last night. I had hot wings. I had a rack of ribs. They brought out this warm cookie thing with ice cream on top. And, I mean, I was just... You know, that stuff was just crawling up in my throat. And topping off your car gets fuel where fuel doesn't belong, and that's into your, you know, there's electronic solenoids and evaporative system components. You don't want to mess. So when we come back, we're taking your calls and your texts at 411-923. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car. Any questions you have, you can always get a hold of the show at 602-277-5827. We're topped off on phone calls today, but you can also reach us at bumper to bumperradiocom There's a contact link. Those emails come to either Matt or myself, and we're not always as speedy as we like to be at getting back, but usually by Tuesday or Wednesday we got you an answer. So. Well, another thing about the about the email, and it's not just a place to come ask us questions whenever you want to, but we really like to know and get feedback. Mm. It, it's nice to get a note that says, hey, I called in and you pointed me to a shop and they took great care of me. Or you told me to try this and it worked and you saved me a, a handful of money. Or whatever happens, we really appreciate that follow-up at times. And again, uh, if you missed the opening of the show, we're always – look. this show is for you, the people that are listening – if there's something that you want us to talk about or you want information about, send us an email, and Dave and I will research it, and we'll make the show about that topic. There's, there's... If it's critiquing and it's anything hard to hear, don't send it to Matt. He can't take it. I can take it. Go ahead and say, hey, you know what? I really like when you guys do this, and not that. So any ideas you got. We're going to go with Jerry in Chandler on a 1998 Ford Ranger. Go ahead, Jerry. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Thanks, guys. Um, I got this little uh, truck a few months ago, and it's just a really basic little, I call it a beater truck, 200,000 miles. It's a four-cylinder, five-speed, and it runs really, really good. I really like this little truck. But on the dash, it's got the icon showing. It blinks, showing that the that the uh, uh, airbag is not proper. Well, it's got that, that thing is blinking, and I'm assuming that that's telling me that the airbag is not working. 
I've checked underneath the hood. I can't see any damage that's ever been to this done to this truck. The steering wheel looks like it's the original steering wheel. The airbag thing is totally in place. Um, the the cruise control buttons are all corroded. They work, but they're they're corroded. So I think it's this stock steering wheel. Is there anything that can be done? Is there, is there anything you can check on that to find out what the problem with the airbag is? Because I, I would love to have an airbag. Yes. Well, you know, that system is a lot like a check engine light. It's constantly doing self-tests. And there is a, a control module for the airbag system. And and it's going out and it's testing igniters. It's testing uh, the resistance of, of multiple airbags. Maybe there's only one in that vehicle. I'm not sure off the top of my head. And if it sees a problem or something it doesn't like, it's going to turn on the light, and then that's going to set a code. We can go in with a scan tool. Now, your little $99 reader, that's going to get engine codes. You've got to go have a have a shop that has the right scan tool. And to be able to go in and, and, and read the SRS, Secondary Restraint System, computers, and find, oh, out, and find out what the code is. <laughs> Off the top of my head, that one might have a driver's side airbag. But if I had to just put a wild guess out that I'd probably put a little bit of money behind, there's a part called a clock spring. Mm. And it's, it has nothing to do with a clock or a spring, really. It's a... It's a, a spool of wire tape is, is is what it is, and that's wound up inside the steering wheel, if you will. So when you turn the wheel, you can still maintain that good electrical connection. Those, it's like a paper clip. You bend it so many times, it's eventually mm, going to break. 200,000 miles. He said original steering wheel, a little bit of corrosion, stuff like that going on. Yeah. I'd, I'd be putting my money on that in a wag, what I call a wild guess <laughs> <laughs> that that so that that's a repair you may or may not be able to do at home you may not want to mess around with it you've got to be careful with those airbags again uh chandler we were just talking about ads automotive diagnostic specialties fantastic shop. Uh, good shop you'll find them at bumper to bumper radio might be a good place to start all right we're gonna go with bonnie and then we've got james and mike and if we don't get to you we're gonna get to you after the show go ahead bonnie you're on bumper to bumper radio Hi, good morning. I have a 1999 Lexus RX300, and I've got a couple of problems that surfaced about the same time. They're minor, but uh, just bothersome. Uh, we've got a the dome light that's on the roof in the midsection of the car behind the sunroof. It turns on manually in both directions, um, forward, and then off in the middle, and then backwards, and it's on again, solid. But it won't work. It won't auto dim with the doors, like when the door is supposed to auto dim on one of those settings when you shut the door after so many seconds. It, that doesn't work anymore. And um, and then it doesn't turn on. Well, we leave it in the off position now because it doesn't work. <laughs> the second problem is, and my, my husband's wondering if they're interrelated somehow. The second problem is I have a, a key that opens the door, and it has it's the older type key where it's got the actual alarm buttons on the key itself mm -hmm. and there will work for a couple of days if i put it in the lock and you know turn it left twice and then hit the alarm it'll beep and shut the lights off it'll work fine a couple of days like i said and then it'll just quit again and we've changed the batteries of course we've changed and on the dome light thing we've changed light bulbs and nothing seems to solve it and I've sat in here and tried to reprogram it with some directions that I found on the inter internet. Right. And I think reprogram it. I think there may be something going on with the body control module, and uh, that's not going to be something that you've tried all the kind of the basic things reprogramming it. The body control module that works with the alarm system. So when you when you hit the alarm and you lock it, that's what's going to actually dim out the lights. So they could all be related. It's just a module, you know. And again, we were talking about different scanners and getting into different modules. But that module may be starting to have an issue. It may not be going to sleep. It may not be waking up. I'm thinking issues like that. You're in Phoenix, so one of the nice things is you're right down the street from a great auto repair shop, Virginia Auto Service. Matt won't say it, but but I'll say it for him. <laughs> but there's going to be need to be some diagnostic work going for a weird alarm issue like that in a you know dome you know dome not like not fading out. That's what I'm thinking. It, Thoughts? It, well, it could be something silly, a bad battery connection. I mean, wishful thinking maybe, but you just get weird things. And now I can tell you one thing too, or a lot of things I can tell you, but when it comes time to get that fixed and you decide the shop to take it to, 
whenever you have a key problem or a remote control problem or some kind of an issue, we really need to get in the habit of bringing all of our keys for the Both car. Keys. We have that a lot, Dave. We're, we're in the shop and we're doing something. Uh, some procedure requires a reprogramming. Maybe there's nothing wrong and the customer didn't have any problem. We're going and we're chasing down second sets of keys because you just have to have all the parts. For sure. We've got a text here that I didn't get to answer. A uh, guy's got a Lexus, 130,000 miles, wondering if he should service it. Go ahead and send us an email at bumpertobumperradio.com. I've got an extensive answer for you. Uh, go ahead and send an email up there. And any of your questions, you guys can all get a hold of us there. While you're there, be sure to like us on Facebook. Sometimes my talk and my brain, they don't go together. Uh, Peter, thanks for running the dials. From all the shops at Bumper to Bumper Radio, we wish you a safe and uh, happy holiday this week. Uh, stay out of trouble. Remember never to text and drive in next year automotive car resolutions for the new year.